All right, 2025 is here. It's going to be a crazy year for 3D. So I wanted to go through some of the trends and tools that I think are going to have a huge impact this year. And hopefully you can start using some of them in production. You would have seen the video I made on Crea and it showcased the real time image to 3D demo. And since then, a lot of people have come and said that they are actually using this in production. So it's pretty much ready. So if you start thinking about using this to create 3d models modeling traditionally usually takes forever you've got uv maps typologies and textures and it can be pretty slow another one i think you should keep an eye on is meshy so we did a video 12 months ago on this and the progress that's made is pretty staggering so this is actually the model we created back then so they've added a few new tools let's start with this motion and so you can actually animate. So you might remember we anim animated in that using Mixamo, I think it is. But it looks like they've got that built in now. So all you've got to do is put your model in. He's in T-Pose, which is pretty good. Let's just line up the chin, shoulders, wrist, knees, ankles. Maybe pull them up a little bit. And again, Meshy, people are using this all the time. They're downloading these models, putting them into Blender or 3DS Max, and it's really good for specific models. So we've got an AI generated 3D model there. Anyway, this can be downloaded. Let's see if we can run. There we go, tons of animations here as well. So how this works is new model, and then we upload the sneaker, so kind of like this one. We upload this, has the name here, and you just hit generate, and they will generate these four, and then you click on the one that you think will work the best. So I think I click this top left one, and it will generate this. Um, so first, let's have a look at the wireframe, which I think is very, very good. And then the material as well, if we turn that off, not bad, pretty crazy here. But again, you can you can remesh it if you want, texture, animate. So perhaps we can, okay, that's the texture that's on it. So we can try this AI texture edit in. Maybe faces are just tough because I've noticed like a lot of the people and characters are always quite cartoony that are AI generated. I've not seen like super realistic ones. So maybe that's something to do with it. Uh, sneaker they call them don't they sneaker all right that's a bit of an improvement that's much better all right apply to model i'm not on pro so we can't actually do that but you can do that and then you'll get this model obviously yeah it needs some cleanup enlarge the texture here we go um so you like this area here if the ai texture didn't work you could actually go in here and clean it up a little bit but when you use this you could put this in your scene render it out and then use something like magnifique which we're going to look at in a minute this will work i know it'll work because i've done it so this is how you can generate models perhaps not a hero models yet but if you need a specific thing like a west highland white terrier dog then these are certainly can be used for like background props and then upscaled so this year meshy is going to be big and something else i want to show you is meshtron this is like an M nvidia research and what this can do is convert point clouds into meshes and much cleaner much nicer so worth keeping an eye on meshtron as well and why i think this is really cool is because the whole city of tokyo is available to download and when you start combining something like this, like all of this, I think it's point cloud data, and then you use Meshy to make it into polys, super powerful. So I think this is going to be a really interesting thing to watch this year. All right, so AI in post-production and upscalers especially are going to play a huge role. So what we're seeing on screen right now is Chaos Enhancer, which is actually built into Enscape. I'd love to see this in other products. So the big thing here, I think, is that this is actually built into your software. So you render your image and then you run your upscaling within your frame buffer and you get these improvements. So these are specifically for people and vegetation and you literally just click a button in whatever software you're rendering in. So this is huge. And then obviously we have got Magnifique combined with Meshi, which we just looked at. This is actually the old video. So this is how I was adding animation to the model. Then we started using Magnifique to actually upscale the final result and get something that we could actually use 
in our image. So there's our chef and then yeah, using Magnifique and some of the creativity and resemblance, etc. We actually improved that and then brought into Photoshop. So Magnifique is crazy powerful. There's another video here I did last year showing the upscaling, but then also using prompts to change the location of our uh, Land Rover here. So we went through and we actually used style transfer and we were kind of just doing like a bit of an ad campaign to show the Land Rover in various terrains. So this is how that went. And that was last year. So things are already improving, but these are the things that we can start thinking about to add like more value to our static renders. And then obviously generative fill in Photoshop has just changed the game of, of how we do post-production. So in this video, I was adding people using generative fill and then bringing them over into Magnifique AI to upscale them and then bring them back into Photoshop. Um, so generative fill obviously as well. Um, what's great about that is it can predict textures, lighting and details and just fill in gaps. You can recomp a whole scene, you know, just doing generative expand, which is absolutely insane. All right, so keeping up with new tools and technologies has always been a challenge, but with the rate of change that's happening right now, it's harder than ever. And that's why I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So when I wanted to improve all these videos you're watching on YouTube, I took Marcus Brownlee's YouTube class and it gave me some incredible insights into content creation. The Skillshare isn't just for video creation, it's the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts from across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity and more so Skillshare can help take your career skills hobbies passions or side hustles to the next level and it's packed with 3d modeling and rendering classes with 14 by yours truly including one that I've got on Magnific AI the tool that we were just looking at and the best thing here is the first 500 people to use the link in my description are going to get a one month free trial on Skillshare. So you can go and watch all my classes and anything else you're interested. So go get started on that today. So like I just said, staying up to date with these new tools and techniques is essential and AI is making this faster and easier than ever. So I saw this video by Polly Ford uh, and he is using Gemini voice assistant in Blender to help him create a scene and animate and answer questions and then I believe he even started making scripts so that it would push the script straight into Blender and he ended up putting together this animation. So I think having these assistants next to you as you're working is going to become even more popular this year and this is definitely something I'm going to be exploring like having a real-time guidance as we're implementing something is going to be incredible and something else I've been exploring so this is our coffee hours they're weekly so come over to school they're free come join uh, and we just discuss 3d and in this video I'm talking about how so we created the Gaussian splats video and one of the things that come up from the community of this coffee hour was like how to get shadow catchers under every object. So I use ChatGPT to help me write a script that when you run it, it will apply a shadow catcher to every object in the scene. Um, something that I probably wouldn't have been able to do without a without ChatGPT. So like with a little bit of back and forth, I gave it a description of what I wanted. It wrote the max script, then we run it and it will save me a ton of time. So this is another way that I think that these large language models are going to help us in our creative endeavors. So looking at all this, the world of 3D is evolving faster than ever and it's transforming how we create and deliver our work. And if you want to connect with a community of 3D artists that are navigating these trends, whether with excitement or sometimes uncertainty, then come join our free school community. I'd also recommend checking out this video. And thanks again for Skillshare for sponsoring this video.